everyone! So I had a request a while ago to do a video on skin conditions and I hadn't gotten to it yet so I want to make sure that I get this out. Uh, so this would be anything from things like eczema and psoriasis to um, like um, chronic hives, right, or rashes, um, to like chronically itchy skin, chronically dry skin, um, acne, um, really any any problem with the skin that, that you might be having. This, this video is going to cover all of that. Um, and like anything that I do when I talk about a specific condition, I'm really trying to zoom out and look at the foundations, right? Because there's nothing magical about having a specific condition or diagnostic criteria in terms of like then knowing what to do about it, right? It's more about looking at how this symptom is a manifestation of deeper foundational issues. So when I do these uh, specific condition videos, which <laughs> in the past I said I wasn't going to do, but I just get so many requests for them, um, I'm going to repeat myself a lot, um, you know, things that I've said in other videos, but I'm going to try to connect it to how it's manifesting with these specific symptoms. But it's really, it's always still going back to those foundational issues. There's not like a, a magic thing, uh, but it's, it's really going back down to like, how is this connected to the foundations of our health? So I'm going to go through that with the skin. So there's three things that we really want to be thinking about when we think about the skin and how it functions in the system of our body. Our skin has a microbiome. We don't usually think about this because we think microbiome and we think gut health, right? And yes, the largest microbial community in our body is in our gut, but we have a lot of microbes that live in our skin too. And so we need to think about the health of the microbiome of our skin. We also need to think of our skin as a detox organ. Again, we don't usually think about it like this. We think like liver, kidneys, lymphatic system, right? Um, even colon, like we, we think of those as kind of our, our main detox organs, but our skin is actually a major detox organ and a lot of symptoms of chronic skin issues are actually symptoms of your body trying to detox and your liver kind of being, or your colon kind of being backed up and congested and so things coming out of your skin instead. The skin is also a sensory organ. It especially responds to light, actually. Um, you know, it responds to like temperature and, and things like that as well, touch, of course, um, but light is actually a main thing that our skin senses. It's not just our eyes. We have, you know, photoreceptors in every cell in our skin, and so um, the light that we are absorbing through our skin every day uh, is actually a, a major factor in our overall health. So I'm going to be talking about the skin through those three um, frameworks. So let's talk about the microbiome first. Really, we need to look at the microbiome of our skin as a reflection of the microbiome in our gut, right? So the gut, like I said, is kind of our main hub of microbial activity in our body, but then we have microbial communities in every single organ and area of our body, right? And all of those microbes are all talking to each other and communicating to each other through chemical signaling, Right, our cells have these chemical signals, um, and the the microbes also are picking up on these chemical signals from each other. And so there's this big conversation always happening in our bodies of the microbes talking to each other, and the microbes in our guts are always talking to the microbes in our skin, and vice versa. And so our skin health is really a window into our gut health. And this might surprise some people because a lot of times people will not really have digestive issues or may have minor digestive issues, but they have all these skin issues and they don't connect the two. But really, if you're having skin issues, there's stuff going on in your gut, right? And maybe the symptoms in your gut just haven't kind of trickled up to the surface yet, uh, but it's there. Um, and additionally, I mean, a lot of people do have it where they have digestive issues and skin issues together. That's also very common, and it's because they're connected, right? Um, so uh, you can also see this with common inflammatory foods. Like, it's very common for people who have, like, something like eczema or psoriasis to cut out things like wheat or milk or soy and notice an improvement in their symptoms, right? 
And it's because those foods with all their very inflammatory or potentially inflammatory properties were irritating the digestive system, right? And, and leading to damage in the gut lining and imbalance in the microbial communities there. And that's translating out to the skin, right? So, I mean, if you haven't tried that, that would be like a baseline thing, like eliminate those top inflammatory foods, things like wheat, milk, uh, corn, soy, even oats sometimes for people. Um, I go through like the basic elimination's for you know preaching your best health in my book rebuild yourself uh and you know that book is focused on the nervous system but it's no different for the skin because the nervous system is connected to the gut the skin is connected to the gut right we can kind of see that as a hub so it's it's all that that advice is going to translate there too um now some people that's enough some people just go gluten-free or go soy free or, or cut milk out of their diet and they're fine right um a lot of times especially if um skin issues are one of many issues you have that's not going to be enough and you may really need to do a full gut rebuild um so this again i detail in my book it's a it's a really kind of intensive process to truly rebuild your gut microbiome uh so i detail how to do it in my book um and then I also have a lot of YouTube videos where I, I talk through it as well, um, shorts and, and some longer ones. So you can definitely look through my gut healing playlist and, and look at that. Um, or like I said, step by step in my book, Rebuild Yourself. If you if you buy that, you'll have the whole process. So really leads it really comes down to cutting all starch and sugar out of your diet. Uh, I really use the specific carbohydrate method of rebuilding the gut because I find it so effective. And so you really need to get on a specific type of low carb diet uh, in order to really get that gut rebalancing to happen. And you have to be patient with this. With skin conditions, and actually the skin takes a long time to heal like the skin it's um it's it's pretty hardy right like it can take a lot uh it's kind of similar to the lungs right asthma also can take a long time to heal and it's funny because sometimes these are not considered like particularly serious conditions you know like because um they may not impact like as much of the day-to-day quality of your life you know depending on how serious they are um but actually it, these kinds of conditions like eczema or asthma, they they actually uh, indicate pretty deep damage. Um, and so the lungs can take, you know, a year, two years to really heal. It's the same with the skin. Sometimes people don't see any improvement in their skin, you know, six months, a year into a gut rebuilding diet. And again, um, we'll circle back around to this, but the skin is a detox organ. And so sometimes when you're going through a really intensive rebuilding process like that, your symptoms will get worse before they get better. So people may notice that their skin symptoms get worse in the short term. And then, you know, a year in suddenly they start to see the improvement. So be patient if you're doing a gut rebuilding diet for your skin, it's not going to work quickly. You're not going to see quick results with this. Um, we also need to prioritize nutrients in the diet that are going to help your skin heal and rebuild. Um, and these are very similar to the nutrients that are going to help your gut heal and rebuild as well. Uh, but fats, right? This is especially true if you have symptoms of your skin being dry, right? So things like eczema, psoriasis, or just kind of dry skin or skin that just, um, is kind of just itchy a lot or, um, sensitive, like very sensitive or, um, you know, you just kind of lack that like luster look, that kind of like um, like like soft, mo- oiled, moist kind of look on your skin. <clears throat> it's not so much that you're not drinking enough water, although that might be true too. I mean, it's always good to look at your water intake and especially your electrolyte intake, which is actually going to allow you to absorb that water, right? So some people truly aren't drinking enough water, but a lot of the times it's actually that people are under eating fats and you have to be eating the right kind of fats, right? So you don't want these omega-6 heavy fats. These are the more inflammatory type of fats. There's nothing like inherently evil about them. They're just, they work on those more inflammatory pathways in the body and they're more for like weight gain in the winter, right? Because they're heaviest in things like nuts, seeds, grains, um, which, you know, were harvested in the fall historically. And that's when people ate them the most. 
And so they're more for like um, activating some of those inflammatory pathways that like help you gain weight for the winter. They're not so much for like healing, repairing. Um, And that's really the omega-3 heavy fats, which are for the most part going to come more from animal foods. There's a few exceptions, things like flaxseed or walnuts. um, But for the most part, you do want to limit like nuts, seeds, grains in the diet as a primary source of fat, even things like avocado, olive oil. Um, Again, they're not bad foods. You can have them in moderation. You just shouldn't be relying on those for your fat sources. You really need to be relying for the animal foods for your fat sources, especially when you're working to heal the skin, because that's what's actually going to give you that light, nice, like moist luster <laughs> to your skin. Um, I eat a lot of animal fat. Uh, people are always commenting about my skin. I don't use any skincare products. I moisturize with beef tallow you know like and I I just use plain beef tallow or goat milk soap I don't use any any other kind of products at all people are always commenting about my skin Um, it's just because I've spent so long healing my gut prioritizing animal fats in my diet you know doing some of the detox stuff that I'll talk about next Um, so really saturated fats egg yolks fatty fish beef lamb uh, dairy fat Uh, these kinds of things. So if they're very fatty cheeses or sour cream or things like this. Um, The other thing would be collagen, right? So um, not collagen powders. I'm actually not a fan of those. People are always surprised by this. Um, But this is like a heavily processed food, right? It is really unnecessary. Um, People are relying on these like collagen powders and smoothies for, for their collagen. That's not the way to do it. We get plenty of collagen in our diet if we are just eating enough animal food. We do not have to supplement with these collagen powders, and people don't absorb the nutrients from smoothies very well anyway, unless you're being very intentional about it. Um, and and there's some arguments that people aren't really absorbing the nutrients from collagen powders very well either. Like it's a very unnatural way to get collagen in your diet. Uh, So you really just need to eat animal foods and especially bone in cuts of meat where you're, you know, eating down to the bone, eating all those tendons, all the kind of gelatinous, grisly bits connected to the bone, uh, eating things like eggs, shrimp even, um, whole fish like sardines, uh, skin on chicken, right? Um, Ribs, like these are the kind of things where the meat is connected to the bone. Uh, I have a great tutorial on meat stock on my YouTube as well as in my book, Rebuild Yourself. Um, That's another great way to get collagen in the diet. It's just to cook whole chickens and drink the broth from that or, you know, like shanks, like cook shanks as a meat stock and, and drink the broth from that. You need collagen for healthy skin, and that's how you get it, is from these more whole forms of animal foods. Now, in terms of replenishing the microbiome on your skin, first of all, you want to cut anything that could be damaging the microbiome on your skin. So this means whatever kit, like skincare kit (laughs) that you are using, stop. You don't need all those products. And in fact, it's probably damaging the microbiome in your skin. I also don't recommend all these plant-based lotions and skin creams. Plants do not have the right makeup of nutrients for your skin, right? We are not plants. We need animal-based skincare products. So things, um, ghee-based skincare products, tallow-based skincare products, even goat milk-based skincare products. These are the kind of things that you want to use. You can make your own very easily. I have recipes in my book, Rebuild Yourself, for making all your own natural skincare products. Um, or, you know, there are some great companies like Perma Earth or Nose to Tail um, that are uh, Fancy Farm is another one. Um, you can you can look online. There's lots of places out there who are selling these now if you don't want to make it yourself. Um, but you really need to start being gentle with your skin and not using any of these harsh soaps, hand sanitizers, like bring your own soap when you go out so you're not constantly stripping the microbiome off your skin, um, using a gentler, plain Castile soap. Um, and yeah. 
I think that's all I want to say about that. Just really work on your skincare product use and replenish your microbiome by putting probiotics in your lotion. You can literally just empty probiotic capsules into your lotion. Again, ideally animal-based lotions or something like ghee and just rubbing that into your skin. You can make it that simple. Um, you can also use kefir or yogurt uh, in your skin, uh, especially if you home make it, then it's going to be very therapeutic, but you can use store-bought if, if you need to. Um, that's going to have probiotics in it too, especially areas where you have a lot of damage, like an eczema flare-up or something like that. Rub that probiotic um, animal fat into your skin, and that will help as well. Okay, so the next piece is really to start acknowledging your skin as a detox organ. And I have noticed this especially for myself. A lot of my skin issues were chronic hives and flushing um, related to mast cell activation. And really, I noticed this like my skin is my major detox organ actually like I I can tell when my liver is congested or my colon may be a little um, congested because I just start pushing things out of my skin and I will just get these big raised angry bumps and like I can tell that my skin is just pushing things out that way um, and so to really keep on top of that you need to have a pretty consistent detox practice because your body is really taking on a lot of work trying to deal with the highly toxic world that most of us live in today so using things like a dry brush, right, where you can do some gentle exfoliation um, or even doing like bentonite clay masks or taking baths with bentonite clay in it, things that are going to help draw toxins out of your skin. Um, I do recommend detox baths, even if I mean, and people have to always decide this for themselves, but even if you don't have a bath water filter, um, I mean, you can definitely just get a bath water filter, uh, but also you can use things like vitamin C and iodine to help mitigate some of the effects of things like fluoride and chlorine that may be in your bath water. Um, I have a recipe for a detox bath in my book, Rebuild Yourself, um, but basically you use Epsom salt, Lugol's iodine, ascorbic acid, bentonite clay, and then optionally you can use apple cider vinegar um, although that might be a little irritating if you have um, current you know open sores on your skin um, and also use seaweed um, that's actually very therapeutic and in fact a really nice therapeutic wrap uh, if you have a, a flare-up is to uh, rub raw honey like true raw honey you know that you would get from a, a small um, farm that, that keeps bees um, that has all the active enzymes and probiotics and stuff still in it um, rub that on the the wound that's gonna be very therapeutic and then wrap that in wet seaweed um, and that is a really great DIY um, remedy for skin issues you can also rub raw egg yolks into your skin it's very very bioidentical to the nutrients that our skin needs to heal and so uh, instead of again all these like <laughs> little you know fancy skincare products you know that's supposed to help with acne or whatever it is just rub raw egg yolk into that spot and that will help as well um, okay so staying on top of your detox um, you know, making sure you're you're doing other things to support your liver and support, you know, your digestive tract moving uh, smoothly, especially if you tend towards constipation. This is something you really need to stay on top of, whether it's through coffee enemas or high doses of magnesium. Um, I have all, all of this stuff, uh, again, listed out in my book for you guys to go through to help support your detox processes, and this will help your skin as well in the long term. So the last thing I will talk about is the skin as a sensory organ because we really do need proper light exposure on our skin to get it to be really healthy. And now a lot of people are very sensitive to sun exposure uh, because they have not expose themselves to enough sunlight through their life, right? We really hide people indoors and slather them with sunscreen and it makes us very, very sensitive to the sun when really we should have a good solar callus. Um, so your skin will build up resilience to sun exposure. Now, especially if you have um, a lot of histamine issues, sometimes you have to be careful about this. People will have histamine reactions to sunlight, unfortunately, when they get you know very imbalanced in that way. So you have to do this very slowly and mindfully. 
um, or just if you haven't had a lot of sun exposure, you don't want to give yourself really bad burns. Uh, but you do have to like figure out how long it takes for you to get a sunburn, right? And like subtract five minutes from that, <laughs> basically. So even if, if it takes only 10 minutes to start feeling it, like, okay, so just be outside for five minutes for now. And then, you know, in a week, be outside for six seven, eight, just slowly work it up until you're getting at least 20 minutes of sunlight exposure, wearing as few clothes as you can get away with uh, every day. And ideally, I mean, hours, right? Like we really, from what we can tell, I mean, it really is optimal for humans to get like three to eight hours of sunlight exposure a day. And obviously that's not realistic for everyone with their lives. Um, and this doesn't have to be direct sunlight for people who are thinking like, it's cloudy all the time where I live. It can be through clouds, that's fine. Um, and obviously in the winter, it's gonna be colder. You're gonna be able to expose less of your skin. So you can work with all of that, but just as a general rule of thumb, just try your best to get as much sunlight exposure to your skin as possible. Like I said in the beginning, we have photoreceptors on our skin that actually allow all of our detox and digestive and nutrient absorption processes to run correctly. And this is a piece that a lot of people miss in their healing journey and especially their skin healing journey. So it's just something to be aware of. Okay, uh, that is my video about skin conditions. I hope it was helpful. Um, I have a few more videos on my list that people have requested that I still need to get to. Uh, but um, uh, if you have other requests, um, please go ahead and comment and let me know and I'll put them on my list. And also get my book, Rebuild Yourself. It is doing really well. I am super excited about the wonderful response I have gotten. Uh, so I'm really trying to keep up the momentum, keep it on that top 10 list. It keeps kind of like wavering on and off some of those top 10 lists. So I'm really trying to keep it on there so more people see it. Um, so yeah, get it if you haven't already. And if you have gotten it and you like what you see, please leave me review on Amazon. That helps me a lot. Okay. Take care, everyone.